Hey there everybody, Don Evans here from WatchReport.com and today I have a review of the Tutama M2 Pioneer Chronograph. Now you may be saying to yourself, why are you reviewing this watch now when this watch did come out a few years ago? And I'm sure many of you have probably seen and read lots of reviews on this piece. And Quite frankly, uh, I don't know why I'm reviewing it now, but the reality is, is the marketing company here in the United States that handles Tutama, they emailed me and asked if I'd like to review a couple of their pieces. I chose this one, at least for this time being, and here we are with a review. And uh, I definitely want to put a caveat here is that this watch is a sample piece that has been heavily passed around. And because of that, it is not in the best of shape. And normally I wouldn't review a watch in this condition. But once I started looking at it and realizing the price of this watch, I looked at it like, well, it's like I've worn a watch for the past few years and I want to show off what it is going to look like. And I know it's not the same thing as me actually using and wearing this watch over the course of time, but I want to point some things out about this watch uh, since I've got it in hand uh, that I think is actually interesting for a review of a piece like this. Now, when I say price, if you're not familiar with this watch, on this strap, it is $6,100. If you get it with the bracelet, which would come with the strap, you're looking at anywhere's... Uh, Recent searches online, I've been seeing $6,700 will get you the bracelet along with this strap. So let's talk about this watch and what's going on here. First of all, let's get into the case dimensions. You are looking at a 46 millimeter wide by 46 millimeter long or lug to lug of the case. So even though it is a large watch, it has a very short lug to lug. It is 16 millimeters thick and you do have 26 millimeter lug width uh, for the strap. Now, so it's not exactly a small watch, but at least it's not going to be hanging over your wrist or anything because of that short lug to lug. It is an all titanium case. And as I said, I only got it on this strap, which does have a titanium buckle as well. It is a dual deployment uh, strap system here. And you can get it on the solid titanium bracelet as well. And what you have here is a watch that uses a Valjoux 7750 automatic movement, but they've gone ahead and modded it to, or excuse me, modified it to look and function like a Lamagna 5100 movement. And here's what that basically does. It changes how it keeps track of the time. So instead of just having... Um, a register, a subdial that is going to keep track of the minutes once you get the chronograph going. It is going to do it with a, another separate hand. This one will be the one with the airplane on it. That one is going to keep track of your running minutes once you start the chronograph. Your other hand there will keep track of the running seconds. And then you actually have the hours down at the six o'clock position your regular running seconds there at the nine o'clock position. And then at the 12 o'clock position, that is actually your 24 hour time. And then you have the date over there located at the three o'clock position. Um, so let's talk about style and design here. You have a bi-directional bezel, you have a sapphire crystal and, uh, Here's something very important about that sapphire crystal, at least in my opinion, it has a dual AR coating, which means there's an AR coating on the outside and an AR coating on the inside. And that's very important. I'll talk about that here in a minute. As you can see, you have those large paddle rubber pushers on the side to uh, accentuate the chronograph. You do have a screw down crown, a uh, solid titanium case back. You can see a nice engraving on it. And uh, if you're wondering why the strap looks a little odd, well, this is uh, a German piece. And uh, because of that coming from Europe, they put the straps on opposite uh, the way we do here, at least in the United States. I don't know if that's true of all of North America. I'll have to uh, contact one of my uh, Canadian buddies and ask them how they put their straps on their pieces. But it is backwards, at least for me. Now, the reason I didn't change that, and this is going to get into... Uh, 
you know, a few quirks, if you will, and I hate to uh, pull something from a Doug DeMuro video, but it, it is strange some of the issues that I've seen with this watch. So let me go ahead and start with the crown. The crown is extremely small for this watch. Not only is it extremely small, but it is very, very difficult to grasp and get at. I have medium-sized hands. I don't consider my hands to be large or extra large or anything like that. Um, I'm about six foot tall. I have about medium hands here. Um, I don't have uh, fat sausage fingers, if you will. This crown is extremely hard to get at. It is extremely hard to pull out as well. Um, it, it really has to be pushed down hard and then screw, you know, to then screw it back down. I do not find using this crown to be a joy at all whatsoever. As a matter of fact, um, it is, uh, it's just not good. Well, I'll leave it at that. It's just not good. I do not enjoy using it whatsoever. When it comes to the crystal, as I said, this watch has been passed around. Uh, God knows how many times this watch has been passed around and shipped out. And this is the problem with watches with dual AR coatings. Now you have a sapphire crystal, which is very, very, very scratch resistant, as we all know. But then once you go ahead and you apply an outer AR coating, well, over time of wearing it, you are going to see scratches on the AR coating itself. And if you take a look at the close-ups of this piece that I am showing you, there are a lot of scratches on this AR coating. Now, the damage that this watch has received, as you can see, the, the titanium bead blasted case has a lot of scratches and marks and dings on it as well. And as I said, it's been passed around. It is a sample piece that has been passed around to a lot of different people. But let's say that you had this watch for the next three or four years. This, if you wear it on a regular basis or even a semi-regular basis, this is probably what your watch is going to end up looking like. And this is not just, you know, related to Tutama or, you know, it, Sin uses it, Breitling uses them. There are other brands like Mido that use the inner and outer AR coatings. This is what happens. I'm completely against this. I always will be. I think if you have a material like sapphire that is ultra scratch resistant, to go ahead and then put a coating on top of it that is not scratch resistant, it just doesn't make any sense. And then it's very difficult. You have to either send it out to somebody, send it back to Tutama to get that air coating removed and then reapplied so that your $6,100 or $6,900 watch can you know look like new with a scratch-free crystal again. Uh, the other thing is, is because that strap is on backwards, I decided, hey, I'm going to switch that around so I can more comfortably wear it. Uh, that did not happen. And the reason that didn't happen is, um, well, one, this is how I was sent the watch. Uh, just like this, as you see it. And then it came in just a little tiny Tutama package that's like sent around for the press. I did not get a full box. I did not get the strap changing tool, anything like that. So when I took a look at it, obviously you can see you have drilled lugs on this piece. And I thought, okay, well, I'll grab my little tool, I'll go ahead and pop that out, and I'll switch the strap around. Well, that didn't go as planned at all whatsoever. Uh, so here's what's going on with these lug bars and lug pieces. This is not what you would normally expect to find uh, with drilled lugs like this, at least not that I was expecting. I thought I was just going to see like shoulderless spring bars inside of there. Um, what it actually is, is if you're familiar with the pin and collar system from Seiko that they use in the links of their bracelets, that's kind of what you have going on in here. First of all, you have to really, really push down hard. Um, on, on the holes there to get them to pop out. It is, ex you almost think you're gonna break something, but it eventually presses down and you could snap and pop these off. But when I did that, what I didn't realize, I didn't know that it was this uh, pin and collar type system. And you have a big long bar uh, that I, I was able to get the strap off, but then I'm looking and the, the bar is still stuck in the lug hole. I had to use a pair of pliers to be able to slowly pull it out because it just wasn't coming out with my fingers. And then when I did that, I realized there was a big sleeve that was still sitting inside the lugs that had slid off when I pulled the bar out. 
And then of course, you know how this goes. You got to take that sleeve. That sleeve goes inside the strap itself. Then you got to line that up perfectly with the holes. And then you got to get that bar back in there. And then you got to tap that bar down. Uh, I used a little plastic hammer to tap it down and get it all lined back up and lock into place. Now that strap is going to be extremely secure in that watch. There's no doubt about it. But in a recent video, I just went on about how I'm not a big fan of quick release pins uh, in bracelets and, and straps that everybody seems to be doing these days. I think this goes too far in the other direction. To me, especially if you buy the piece that come, you know, on the bracelet that comes with this strap, this is not even remotely a quick change strap system. As a matter of fact, this is a pain in the ass strap change system. And I suggest if you're looking at this watch and you want to purchase one of these, just know what you're getting into with strap changes and that this is not going to be something you're going to want to probably do on a regular basis. If you're going to want it on the bracelet, leave it on the bracelet for a while, vice versa. I, I would do this twice a year at best if that was me. The other issue is now I don't know what the tool looks like that they give you, but the other issue is here, no matter what kind of tool, no matter what you're doing, you still have a bar that's going through the strap into the lugs and that is visible on the outside. And you have to pre depress them to get them out of there. And what happens is you're dealing with a blasted titanium case. Now, as you can see, somebody put a bunch of marks on this. That was not me. Somebody put a bunch of marks on this. Uh, like I said, over time, over the years of this being handled by different you know, press and, and YouTubers such as myself and everything. So you can easily mark this up just doing a simple strap. Well, in this case, a not so simple strap change. And then I think it comes down to the price as well. Now, overall, when you take a look at this watch, I think it is a very, very attractive watch. I've always liked, I like most of the Tutuma lineup, just like I like most of the Sin lineup or anything from say, Mule glass shoot, et cetera. I love German designed pieces. So of course I gravitate towards this. I I'd probably prefer the three hand, over the chronograph, but I really, really like this style and look of watch. I personally would like it better on the bracelet, but this is all that they had to send to me. But when you're looking at a price of $6,100 or $6,900, depending on what you're buying and where you're buying it from, man, that is a hefty price tag. And you really have to balance and look at what you're getting. Yes, you are getting that modified movement. Yes, it has a lot of features. It's anti-magnetic, all of that. Um, and it is a very nicely designed and built case. Everything does feel solid on it. Now, like I said, I absolutely hate the crown. There's no other way I could say it. I hate it. I absolutely hate the crown. Uh, the strap on this is okay. You have Lorica backing on the nylon strap. Uh, it's pretty comfortable. It is dual deployment. You have a titanium buckle and everything. It looks pretty good. As I said, I would personally prefer on the bracelet. When it comes to the loom, uh, everything's printed here. There's nothing applied, but the loom is very good, especially the loom on that bi-directional bezel. Uh, it just looks really great in the dark. As you can see, I sped up the video here for you, but you see it done over a couple of minutes. The loom is pretty good. I really like the look of it. Uh, they did a good job with that. I think overall, I, I, it's a great watch. It's a great design. Some people say that it is too large. I don't know. Uh, yes, if you, if you probably have a six and a half or seven inch wrist, it probably is very large, even though it has that short lug to lug. It's a 46 millimeter case. It, it's not a small watch. I just don't think it's, uh, the proportions are massively oversized. On my seven and a half inch wrist, I think it fits uh, just fine, even with the awkward way that the strap is configured for it right now. But if you want to see more about this piece, I'm going to have a full written article on watchreport.com as usual. The link will be in the description. I'll leave a link to the uh, Tutuma website as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. It is a little strange, as I said, for me to review a piece that's kind of been a little bit put through the ringer, such as this one. But I think then it also gives us a good look at uh, what this watch would look like after some regular use over, you know, a two, three, four year period, um, especially when you're dealing with a blasted case and a double, 
dual AR sapphire crystal. So let me know what you guys think about this piece in the description or down in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you on the next one.